part of the first person tutorial series. I'm Steven and this time we'll be delving into what you must do to make enemies attack back. Previously we created an enemy that reacts when shot by the player, now we will make the enemy shoot at the player too. If you haven't seen the previous parts, there's a link in the annotation to the site. Feel free to check that out first and come back here to continue, otherwise let's get stuck in. Ok, to get started we want the enemy's attack to be a large green ball that they shoot towards the player when the player is within range. So right click in the hierarchy on the left and select 3D object and choose sphere. Reset the transform in the inspector. This way, when eventually we link the object to the enemy, it will be easier to position. Next, choose add component and then physics and rigid body. Also, set the sphere collider as a trigger by checking the box is trigger. Then rename this object paintball as that's what it will kind of resemble. If it's going to be a paintball, we want to make it look something like a paintball. To do this, we are going to need to create a material which we can use to color our sphere. So right click the assets folder and choose create material. Name it matte paintball and then choose the albedo in the inspector and color the paintball however you like but for this I'm going to choose a nice green for mine. And then when you've created it, drag the material onto the object and it should now be colored. Next up is creating some scripts to use on the paintball. So right click in the assets folder and choose C sharp script and name it paintball. Drag the created script onto the paintball object and you can either drag it straight onto the object or click and drag it into the inspector. Make sure it appears in the inspector like you can see here and once you have done that go ahead and drag the paintball object we've now created into your assets folder and this will create a new prefab. Remember that we still need to write our paintball script but before that let's create another C sharp script called player info. Then double click it to open it in the editor. Now this script is what we are going to use to give our player health and it will also be used to take health away from the player. So the first thing to do is get rid of the update method and then type at the top private int underscore health. This is our health value and we will need it to initialize and set its value. So in start type underscore health equals 10 and that will set the player's health to a value of 10. Now we want to create a method that can be used to hurt the player and let's call this hurt. So type public void hurt and then int damage. Now, we need to make it public to call it in other scripts and int damage will be the value that we take away each time the player's hit. Then we need to take the damage off, so type underscore health minus equals damage and debug.log health colon and then plus underscore health. So this will take the health off the player and for right now we will be displaying it in the debug log but Naturally, you'd probably want it to be displayed on screen using a GUI. But for now, we'll just keep it like that. Then save this script and go back into Unity and click on the player in the hierarchy. Then drag our player info script onto the player's inspector and save the scene. Now back to our paintball script. Double click on it to open it in the editor. And we want this script to move the ball forward and detect a player hit. So first we need to just to define some variables. Type public float speed equals 10.0f, which sets how fast the paintball will move, and then public int damage equals once, which is how much it will hurt the player. Then in our update method, we have transform.translate 0, 0, and speed times time dot delta time, which is how we will move the ball. We also want to have a method that can check if the paintball has hit the player. So to do this we use on trigger enter. So type in void on trigger enter collider other. So do you remember when we set our paintball's collider to use trigger and added a rigid body? That was needed for this method to work. Inside this we want to type player info player equals other dot get component player info. And here we are creating an instance of player info and then pulling the information in using the other collider which will be the collider attached to our player. When hit we need to take health from the player so first we check if we actually hit the player by typing. If player does not equal null then player.hurt 
damage. We also need to be sure that the paintball is destroyed when, when used. So type destroy this dot game object. All of this happens when the paintball collides with an object and when that object happens to be the player, the player will lose health. Save the script and click back to Unity now. So we've created our paintball and added health to the player. Next we want to have the enemy shoot the paintball at the player. We need to have the enemy check if the player is in their line of sight to do this. So first open up the enemy underscore movement script we created in previous parts to this tutorial. The first thing to do in this script is delete out this section that we have inside our if statement like shown. We need to rewrite this, so type game object hit object equals hit dot transform dot game object. This takes and assigns the game object the raycast collides with. Then we need if hit object dot get component player info and this essentially checks if we hit the player by confirming the object contains the player info script. Next we have if underscore paintball equals null. And we haven't declared this variable yet, so go back to the top and type in public game object paintball prefab and private game object underscore paintball. Then back to our if statement and type underscore paintball equals instantiate paintball prefab as game object, then underscore paintball dot transform dot position equals transform dot transform point vector three dot forward times 1.5 f and underscore paintball dot transform dot rotation equals transform dot rotation. What this essentially does is it creates an instance of our paintball, then it sets the position to that of our enemy and its rotation to that of our enemy and this way it will shoot forward when created. We now need to add back in the code that makes the enemy turn whenever they're about to collide with an object. So type else if hit dot distance is less than obstacle range and float angle equals random dot range minus 110 110 and then transform dot rotate zero angle zero. And that is the script finished so make sure you save it and then go back to unity. Now we can delete the paintball from our scene then click on the enemy prefab. You should now notice in the inspector to the right that our enemy underscore movement script has a space uh, for our paintball prefab. So drag the paintball from the assets folder into that space. This makes sure that we spawn the correct object when the script is running. And if we hit the play button and we go ahead there and try and get in front of the enemy, we can see that they'll now shoot these large green balls out towards you, which is our paintballs. And if you look closely at the bottom of the screen in the debug log, you'll see our health is being displayed. So if you are hit by a paintball, you'll notice that changing there each time. Once again, we have come to the end of another tutorial. And this time we were able to cover making an object fire out in a certain direction and detecting if the player is in front of the enemy for an attack. So thank you all for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe for more tutorials just like this and I'll see you next time.